These are the plaintiffs, Artenka Carswell and Norman Bolding Jr. They say they rented an apartment from the defendant, and when they moved out, she unlawfully kept most of their security deposit. They refused to be taken advantage of because they left the place in the same condition as when they moved in and are suing for the $1,804.16 they're owed. This is the defendant, Pamela. She says she returned over $1,000 of the plaintiff's security, but kept some money to make the necessary repairs to the damages they caused and to get rid of furniture they left behind. Owe them money? No way. She's accused of holding on tight to the cash. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiffs say they refuse to be ripped off by their unscrupulous landlord who basically stole their security deposit even though there is no justification for it. Now, the defendant says she returned some of the plaintiff's money, but she also kept some to repair the damages they caused. It's the case of holding on tight. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Carswell and Mr. Bolding, you're suing your former landlord, Ms. Pamela, for $1,804.16 because she kept part of your security deposit and you're angry at the reasons she kept it. So somehow that has turned into three times your security deposit. Talk to me, which of you wants to address me first? Your Honor, the reason why that um, I pursued the case today is not so much that I'm angry because she withheld some of the deposit. That's expected coming in a tenancy in New York City. It's some of the deductions that I believe that she put forth are fraudulent. There was a, a deduction for a cable visit for $100 for direct TV. That wasn't our expense. I believe that was hers. Um, there was also deductions for a screen that was clearly in one of the videos that I submitted as evidence. So when we decided to exercise our What's month a, Why month, is that one fraudulent? Why was a deduction for the screen fraudulent? We never took the screen. And in that screen. video, it's not broken. Oh, it's she, no. she sued you for taking a screen, and the screen's there. That's what you're saying. That is correct. OK. It all started because there was a leak in the bathroom that she wanted to get fixed, and it was during the height of COVID. So it originally dates back to, I want to say, November 2018. What I did was I emailed her, letting her know that the towels in the bathroom was cracking. She came with the contractor, and at the time, the contractor told her that Ms. Williams, whoever installed the bathroom towel, did it incorrectly, and that in order to have the bathroom towel done, we would have to leave the apartment for two weeks. And then he suggested, oh, well, maybe they can use a porta potty during the time that the bathroom renovations would have took place. Which is not going to happen. Now, we, no. <laughs> was told, <laughs> we was told by Ms. Williams that the apartment before we moved in was vacant for an entire year. And then when we wanted to move in in October of 2017, she spoke with my previous landlord and asked for a one-month extension, I believe, to paint the apartment. So the apartment was essentially vacant for one year and one month before we moved in. All the necessary repairs to the bathroom could have been done during that time. But when we moved in, that's when she wanted to handle the renovations. Well, so, how long had you lived there by the time she wanted to, to it, it's not a renovation, it's repair a <clears throat> leak because she's, Ms. Uh, Pamela, you were sensing the effects of a leak in your place where you live, which is just underneath them, correct? Oh, water started coming down. I actually submitted one of the paper, uh, a picture okay. where you can see the right. damage. Water so it's not renovations. It's trying to fix a serious plumbing problem. But in any event, by the time it's actually going to happen, it's COVID time, right? It's like March. Yes. And so she wanted you, she thought you would be happy because I see in her text when she says, good news, a contractor can do it this weekend and he'll get it done all day Saturday and all day Sunday. So you, you just have to get a hotel for Saturday night. You guys tell her, we're not paying for a hotel. You have to pay. She says, OK. And then she tells you it's going to be this weekend. And that didn't work out for you. And no. according to you, Ms. Pamela, why didn't it happen? It didn't happen because of the multiple delays that the two here kept putting on me. Um, I tried to work with them. 
I haven't always been a landlord. I've been a tenant. So I try to treat them like I like to be treated myself. Anything that I brought to them was not acceptable. As she said, we had one contractor that wanted to do two, two weeks. I said, that's not, that's not going to happen. And that's when we were trying to look for options, where they could stay, what we can do, what have you. And then plus, she was um, concerned about the animal because her pet, she said, had anxiety. And, but there were other times I had ensured her that um, I'm going to keep working and see if we can find someone. So finally, we found this contractor that said, listen, I can do this in two days. She works the weekends. Okay. Norman is the one that doesn't work the weekends. So this was great for me. This is where the great news came from. I thought they were going to be super excited. So now that work is supposed to happen that weekend, but it doesn't. Why doesn't it happen? Because they wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't let me in. They said How did no. they, what they and say? They said, they said that they had uh, COVID issues. They, had, they were quarantining themselves. They put themselves on quarantine. So okay. I was like, okay. So they put themselves on quarantine. You Although didn't buy Norman it, right? was in and out every he it wasn't true. Norman was in and out every day, all day, or every day. Miss Carswell, no, but he definitely continued his normal strain of business. So I said it was all right. So this when she said, Well, I'm gonna move. That was a verbal conversation. So I said, Well, you know what? Give me something in writing and let me know. You're definitely gonna move. And I said, if you're gonna move, it's fine. Okay. Let's so she does move. You guys move on what day, folks? Miss Carswell, when do April you April twenty ninth. April 29th. April 29th. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now, Ms. Uh, Pamela, you have retained how much of their security deposit? $717.16. Why did you retain it? Okay, they mentioned the screen. I didn't say that they took the screen. They didn't take the screen. The screen was damaged. So the screen had to be repaired. On moving day, I work from home. I don't have the television on during the day. However... As they were moving, moving up and down, they had movers coming and they unplugged their television. When they unplugged their television, for some odd reason, all of my service in my house went out. So when I was alerted that the televisions had went off, I went upstairs and I said, oh my goodness, I said, did you just cut the cable? And she says, no, why would you think I cut the cable? I didn't cut any cable. I said, well, what did you just do here that all of my televisions just went out? So she said, um, I unplugged my TV. And I said, oh. Okay, but so, so says, why? I have so you, I understand TV. that you had to call Direct TV, and according to you, you had to pay them a hundred dollars. But what did she do wrong? The act of pulling out or unplugging her TV? She's never going to leave her no, TV no. behind. She's moving out. No. Yes. Yes. No judge. Yes. No. I yes. understand. She pulled her TV out. She unplugged her TV. In other words, why is that something she has to recompense you for? I mean, I know it's because sad I that you had to fork out on my bucks, cable so service. Her because what I evidence do you have? My cable service. What I evidence don't. do you have that I I'm don't plugging have the TV? Stop and listen to me. I'm then you can't prove that, and you can't withdraw for you can't withhold their security deposit for that. Because if she has a TV plugged in a room and she unplugs a TV in the room, that doesn't turn off cable everywhere else in the house. In, in my house, even though every room is sharing cable in my house, that's not how it works. Come on. So that would never no, well, be something this is what happened. Here's a picture of the screen that we were talking explain. about. And that's what she's saying. Not that the screen is missing, but that the screen is busted. What happened with that screen? Why is it busted? That screen is to the back room that we never used. Oh, okay. we never used that right, room. Now we never even opened paint, the door. Dirty stove, nails in the wall, nails in the wall. What are you withholding for pipes? Why do pipes have anything to do with... Ooh. I didn't oh, that's, is that hair? Pipes. I showed you a picture of the hair that came out of that tub um, when they repaired. That is it. So, you know, I'm not trying to be unfair here. Let me ask you a question. Did you ever send them a notice of what you were going to keep and why you were going to keep it? Yes, I did. All right. I'm seeing that you wrote the letter to her May 22nd. When did you receive the letter, Ms. Carswell? I received the letter in the mail on June 4th. And when did you get the money? That was on May 28th. And that was at one something 28. in the morning. So it was yes, after the letter, out. after the letter. Okay. Yes. And you moved out April 29th. Is there any dispute, Ms. Pamela, that she moved out April 29th? No, that's correct. How long do you have she by law down. to tell a, a tenant what you are to itemize for them, what you are keeping, and to return the rest of it. How long do you have by law? Do you know? 14 days. Okay, and did you do it within the 14 days that you are allowed to by law? I did, the payment and the um, 
I'm sorry. The payment. If she moved out April 29th, how is sending her a letter on, April, on May 22nd 14 days? That is not 14 days. That is well beyond the 14 days, isn't it? Welcome back to the People's Court. The plaintiff is having great difficulty trying to tell the judge whether she gave proper notice before she bailed on the apartment. Uh, is she circling the drain? We'll find out by going back into the courtroom. Why didn't you send her a letter within 14 days like the law requires? You have 14 days to send the letter, itemizing. Okay, you dated the letter May 22nd. You understand that there are 22 days in May, plus April 30th. So that is 23 days. That is not 14 days. Everything I'm looking at in this case, and I have gone item by item for everything that you have submitted, mm -hmm. says that you didn't give her an itemized list before May 22nd. So now my only question to you is, do you have some proof that you gave her an itemized list as the law requires within 14 Not days the of the list. end of her lease? Right. And yeah, that's the, the law. List. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't think 14 days is enough time for a landlord. But no, no, write your congressman in New York. Write your congressman I in New York. Because that is the law <laughs> in New York. As of the last few years, it's 14 days to send them the itemized letter so really, landlords have to hustle. The minute they get out, they got to get out there and get their estimate and send their letter. If it turns out that it costs you cheaper, bully for you and send them more. But if you do not send an itemized letter within the 14 days, you're dead. And by dead, yeah, I, I mean if it. a landlord. I, I got gotcha, you, but, you know, you got me, right? I got gotcha. It ain't personal, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. Ms. Carswell, during the time that you lived there, did you guys get along? We got along fine. It wasn't until we exercised our right to move and she asked for a confirmation on April 20th. On April 23rd, she took away the Wi-Fi. On April 23rd, she also sent us a letter indicating that she was increasing our rent by $300 because she was encountering problems. Imagine my surprise when I looked on the website and saw that she was now posting the apartment for $1,900. So I felt that After she, she was told you that it would be twenty one hundred. Mm -hmm. Right. We felt that she was retaliating against us because we was moving because everything was so rapid fire. When we was moving out, right. I always emailed Miss Pamela to let her know this is the date we're moving out. If there's any hiccups, we of course we'll let you know. We even paid April's rent because we wanted to have a great exit. And you could probably see You're from some of the- You're supposed to pay April's rent. You know that, right? Yes, yes, but I, yes, I understand. But yeah. we really wanted to have a great exit. We didn't want to chance anything. And that's the reason why when I text her back and forth, I told her of the 14 day um, um, law. And she told us you would get your security within 30 days. But I said, why you don't actually you want warn her of the 14 days during yeah, the 14 days. Thinking. You actually tell her, I know. You, she actually tells you, Ms. Pam, that you, you know, you only have yeah. 14 days and you're like, you'll get it when you get it. And then she gets it when she gets it. And now that's the position I'm in. So because she didn't comply mm -hmm. with what the law requires her to comply with, I am ordering her to return the $717.16. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the plaintiffs do prevail to the tune of $717. Let's see what uh, the landlord, Ms. Pamela, has to say about this. Ms. Pamela, what do you think? Hi. Yes, I, I missed it. It used to be 30. It's now 14. COVID delays. I couldn't make the, I couldn't make the cut. I wasn't being retaliatory. Um, but it's fine. It's okay. They're going. I hope they're happy, and I'm happy. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Carswell, Welcome. Mr. Boulding, what, all right, you satisfied with the $700 you got, $717? That's it? Okay. I'm satisfied, but I just want to say that renter beware, especially with New York um, private homeowners like Ms. Pamela, because you can see that she was upset, and she's upset now that she have to pay this money. And it's, it's just sad. It's sad state affairs that when a renter tried to get an apartment, they have to jump through hoops. But the landlords, they may have dubious backgrounds, God have you. And basically, you're walking into a situation that you didn't create. Well, that could be good advice. All right. Well, thank you very much and congratulations. All right. Let's see what the judges have to say. Ms. Carswell, 
one of the co-plaintiffs in this case, was a very sharp woman. She documented everything. She took very the sharp. videos yeah. that she had to take. And she had pretty good relationship with the landlord. There was a cordial relationship back and forth. She stayed I got the impression the problem was between him and the landlord. Uh, it may be, maybe a little bit. But uh, one thing that came out uh, from your ruling was this New York law on security deposits they're not playing around there. That's like a hard and fast rule. The irony is to... that she actually told her about it. So right. if you don't know the law, that's one thing. And then when you're told the law, maybe go on the internet and see right. if it's accurate. And then right. kind of, and I get it because it's, it's COVID. Like and it's almost like liability for landlords. It's hard for, gotta... for somebody to get somebody to go out there and take a look at things. Right. I get it, but it is what it is, you know? Okay, Bill wants to know this, and this is a good one. Um, hey, Harvey, if I purchased a property and later found out it has an abandoned, clearly forgotten family cemetery from hundreds of years ago. Do I own the remains? Well, first of all, Bill, it sounds a little creepy, uh, but um, this is complicated. If I were you, I would call your local police department first, because even if you could make that argument that it's yours, Remains are difficult because they are considered sacred. And in some cases, depending on where you live, um, it could be you know, disturbing a body. Uh, and that's a crime in some states. So I would call the police department and make sure that you have uh, dotted your I's and crossed your T's so you don't get in trouble. And that will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case inside the courtroom.